Well, hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. We've had a few folks asking us questions about setting the gap on these uh, gas burning appliances. And this would be your refrigerator, your furnace, your water heater. Um, I, just yesterday, I was working on a refrigerator um, and the problem was a gap was tremendously too, I could have stuck my finger underneath the, the burner. I'm about to draw a picture for you guys. So all I had to do was adjust the gap and it was working. So let's take a minute and talk about the importance of adjusting the gap and let's explain what's going on with this thing. So here I am, I'm a control board. Here, let's do this. I am a control board, okay? And um, I'll start with a furnace, okay? We'll start with a furnace and then we'll talk about water heaters and then we'll talk about refrigerators. So your furnace is gonna have a control board, okay? And the control board is gonna be the brain of the operations. And basically the control board, this is where your wires connect. And you've, you've heard me talk about a furnace being on an island in the middle of nowhere, but it needs four wires to connect to it to the rest of the world. And so here's those four wires. Um, these two wires are 12 volts plus, this is 12 volts minus, okay? And then these two wires go out into the world and connect to something and that's what's called for heat. Wonderful. Um, but we're going to talk about the gap. Now let's stay with our furnace here because it's this board right here that needs to know if there's a flame. How does a board supposed to know there's a flame? It has no eyes, it has no ears, all it has is sensors. And so this little thing right here is the igniter. It's a little small little thing that sticks up off the control board. And it's got a little flat connector where you're gonna take a wire. It, sometimes it might be a silicone wire. Um, it, it's gonna be like a spark plug wire. I've seen them orange, I've seen them green. No, I've never seen them green. I've seen them orange, red, and black. Um, some of them are the, are the fat silicone type wire. Some of them are gonna be real skinny black or, or something like that. But we're going to follow this wire here that's connected to this electrode sparking device. I think that's the official term. And we're going to, I'm trying to figure, let me draw your burner. Okay, so there's a burner in your furnace. It's a thing that's got all the holes all over it. Okay, and I'm going to do a cross. I'm going to, we're going to look at it from the side. And a lot of times it's going to be attached to like a bulkhead of some type that sometimes you can remove. But right in the top of it is going to be a little ceramic housing that you'll find. And out of the ceramic housing, I don't want it to touch. And I'll explain what happens if it touches. If it touches, you've grounded it out and it will not work. So you want to make sure that the electrode doesn't touch. But I'm working my way into my story here. And as we're talking about the furnaces, I think the water heaters and refrigerators are going to be a little bit faster once you understand what's happening here. So coming out of this is going to be the other end of this wire. So out of this sparker on your control board is a wire that's attached here and it's going to go to the end of our ceramic housing and out of the other end of the ceramic housing is going to be a little electrode wire sticking out. We want this now. Is your electrode going to look like that? Maybe, maybe not. When you get into your furnaces, you might have uh, the, the ceramic with an electrode and let's say this is how it's attached and there's gonna be a wire here that is spot welded to this metal piece and then it's grounded, okay? Um, so you might have one that's just got two prongs on it. You might have one that has a third prong on it, okay? Um, so the just in the gap is all the same. Um, it's going to be the same regardless of if you have one with three prongs, two prongs. Okay, so I'm going to erase this. Actually, I'm going to leave that there for now. Um, the one with the three prongs is a very old and dated design, um, but they're still out there and you can still get parts for them. But if you have one with the three prongs, it's it's been around since a long time and they're moving those out of the industry. So for purposes of clarity, I'm going to remove that and just leave it with the, the two prong, okay? So we got a signal down here to call for heat, dealing with furnaces. And the board's gonna do several things. Back over here, there's gonna be a skinny, uh, a skinny spade and a fat spade, okay? Um, the skinny spade is where power comes from and sometimes I'll piggyback this off of here. But then the fat spade is going to be the one that goes to your motor, okay? Um, 
So the control board is starting the motor. The control board has got a timer in it. He's got a clock and he's counting to 20. He's counting to 90. He's doing all these things. But, um, and then you have a, another thing over here. You have a sail switch and a high temperature switch and all these things on, on this. Um, this is your sail switch coming back. So I didn't want to focus too much on this. I really wanted to focus on the gap. So I, I'll do another video on all this if you get stuck on it. So, um, so let me keep this simple. Let's focus on the gap because I really wanted to stay focused on that. So the board is going to get a call for heat. It's going to verify that its high temperature switch is not tripped. And it's going to verify that as soon as it starts the motor that the sail switch closes. At that point, he's going to use a timer. He's going to start, he's going to count to about 20. When he counts to about 20, he's going to activate this igniter and that's going to shoot a spark. He's also going to open up the gas valve. Uh, let me move my wire out of the way a little bit. Let's move them over here because your gas valve is going to be coming in here. It's like a little flat thing that goes through the gas valve with a solenoid on it. S means solenoid. And then there's going to be one of these uh, wires that's going to go to the solenoid. I feel like I'm making a mess, but I'm not focusing on this. I really wanted to focus on the gap. After he counts to 20, it's going to open up the solenoid, uh, introducing gas into our burner. And it's at the same time going to start throwing matches into this thing through this spark right here. So if you were careful and you looked, you could actually see a lightning bolt jumping between the tip of the electrode and the burner head. Okay. Some of you will have the burner head. Some of you will have an additional prong. The goal here is that this spark needs to be grounded. It's looking for ground. So we're sending electricity out on this wire and it needs to ground and that's where the spark comes from. So as soon as I open up my gas valve and I introduce gas in here, I'm starting to throw matches in there by, by you know, spark, 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 spark. And you might hear this thing go ticka, 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 ticka. That's the ticking sound. You'll see this little spark here. The gap right here, this gap and this gap needs to be an eighth of an inch. Okay, it's called flame rectification. And the diameter, the gap is a function of the diameter of the electrode. Okay, so if you, in our industry, in RVs, eighth of an inch, three sixteenth of an inch, just what I do is I get an Allen key that's an eighth of an inch Allen key, and I slide that Allen key between the space between the top of the burner and the electrode on these things. I'll just take an Allen key and slide it in there. It's kind of like checking the gap of a spark plug. So an eighth of an inch Allen key works just fine. And it needs to be an eighth of an inch because it's going to be creating that electrical shock, okay, to ignite the gas. And as soon as it does that, it does that for 6.7 seconds, 6.8 seconds. I'm not the one that figured that out, but some engineer somewhere figured out that 6.8 seconds is how long this thing's supposed to go. But as soon as it detects heat, uh, at the same time he's sending a spark, I'm going to take my black pin here, and now we have gas coming through here, and now there's a big flame, okay? Now the thing's on fire, and that's what we wanted because we called for heat and we said it was okay. So now this electrode is in the flame ball, if you will, okay? So we're getting our flame from propane, okay? There's carbon in propane. Uh, basically, propane is hydrogen and carbon. What is it? HC310, something like that. Um, I wasn't prepared for that one. But yeah, propane is nothing but carbon and hydrogen. And when you burn it, you get water and carbon dioxide. Uh, unless this isn't set right, then you get carbon monoxide if it didn't burn clean. But if our gap is set correctly and this is on fire and the electrode is in that flame and there's carbon in that flame, we can actually jump this gap. So I'm sending a current, a little mini current through this thing and I'm going to jump the gap through the carbon in the flame to ground. Okay? So if the gap was too big, it can't jump that gap and your flame, it's not gonna work for you. And that was the situation we had yesterday when I was working on a refrigerator. The gap was too large, it couldn't jump the gap. And I could get it to start, but then it wouldn't stay ignited. Um, the gap was too great, eighth of an inch. Um, I did a video not too long ago on an on-demand water heater, and what we found was the electrode was actually touching the burner. So it was grounding out. And there was no gap to jump because it was touching, so there's no gap. So that's what's going on with this gap. Eighth of an inch is what we want. And, and so as long as the board sees a micro milliamp current going through this wire, I used to know what that is. And if I think of it, I'll add it below, but I know what that number is. It's a really small current. Going through this wire to ground, that's how this board knows there's flame. 
that's how this board knows to keep the solenoid open as long as there's a call for heat. Now, if you run out of propane, your flame extinguishes. Now my, my current that's going through my wire to, my, to ground, there's no more flame. I can't jump a gap anymore. Therefore, I extinguish, I close my solenoid, um, and I might try three times, and after my third time, I'll go into what's called a soft lockout on a furnace. And after an hour, so this clock thing will read an hour, and after an hour, I may try three more times, and after I've tried three more times to start, then I will go into what's called a hard lockout. And all you have to do is to recover from a lockout is just turn your furnace off and turn it back on again, and you've just reset everything. It's really simple. Uh, so don't be afraid of the term lockout. So um, on your furnace, the gap is important. That's how the board knows there's a flame. And you want an eighth of an inch, and we want it right over the eighth of an inch over here. If you had the kind that had the three prongs, well, guess what? It's an eighth of an inch, an eighth of an inch between everybody. Uh, so you wanted an eighth of an inch above the burner and an eighth of an inch between. Um, so I hope that helps. Now what I want to do is let's talk about water heaters. And I'll go a little bit faster because I, don't, I think you understand the concept. I'll reference some of this when you talk about water heaters. So I'm going to erase this. Okay, so I've erased my board and now we're showing water heaters. So the water heater is very similar. It's the same exact concept. Your control board might look a little different, but you're still going to have this wire. So on your water heater, um, you're going to have um, suburban and Dometic are a little different, but the concept is exactly the same. So um, you're still going to have that little crook. I went to black. Let me, I like blue. Let me go to blue. Matches my shirt. Um, so you're still going to have a, a ground right here and a little ceramic-y thing. Okay. Oh, actually, let me do a little bit better. Okay, so he's going to come right over the tip of that. So we still want there to be an eighth of an inch gap right there. Okay. On your water heater. Okay. And um, now let's say you needed to adjust these things. What I do, you never want to put too much stress on the ceramic part of this because it'll crack. If here's a test that you're going to feel, whether it's furnace, water heater, or refrigerator, you're going to, with your fingers, you're going to grab this electrode and grab the ceramic and just wiggle it. If it's loose, like a loose tooth, replace this, replace the electrode. Okay. We want this to be bonded inside that ceramic. So if you need to adjust it, I'll take two pair of needle nose pliers or maybe a lineman's plier and a needle nose plier and I'll grab the, the part that's sticking out. I'll, I won't grab the ceramic, but I might grab it like right, right here. And that's my anchor point. Okay. And then I'll take my needle nose pliers and I'll grab it right there and move it and actually sometimes bend the electrode, put maybe a dog leg or something in it. That's what I had to do with this refrigerator yesterday. It was straight out. And I had to put a little bit of a dog leg in it to get it to fold down. And I did exactly what I'm saying. You're going to grab the electrode here and adjust it out here. Don't just adjust it out here and put the stress on it because then you might put stress here at the ceramic. And if you crack that loose tooth, you got to replace it. I'm thinking they're like, they're under 20 bucks, but still there's just, let's just do that. Um, so on your water heater, um, you're going to want, here's your, your, um, it's called a J tube or a burner, uh, tube or whatever. Uh, suburbans are going to be, you know, looks like a J that's why they call it a J tube and it's going to have a little piece. It's going to come out here and screw on. Um, and this guy here fits right above it. So when you go to our resources tab, myrvyworks.com resources tab, and you click down to annual service worksheets, one of the things you're going to be looking for is the, um, the water heater furnace annual worksheet and what i say on there is to make sure your gap is in the sweet spot and so you want this part right here let me get rid of my black grabby parts okay um there you go you want that actually if i were to be a little bit more accurate this thing stops more in line with right there then it's got this little deflector thing on it these are your suburbans um the flame's going to come out. You want the you want this whole thing here to be engulfed in the fire, okay? And so sometimes we'll see these electrodes kind of moved off to the left or moved off to the right. And again, if the control board can't see, it, more specifically, if the control board cannot move a current through this electrode, jumping this gap to ground, then it's it's not going to see the flame and it's going to think that there is no flame, okay? So. That's water heaters. See, I told you I was going to go a little bit faster. And let me erase this, and now we'll talk about refrigerators. All right? So refrigerators, um, Norcold and Dometic, they're pretty similar. 
okay? When you get into the burner assembly, now its control board might look a little differently, but guess what, guys? You still have this little spark pluggy wire leaving that board. Now on some of them, there, here's your, let's do refrigerators, here's your control board with all the wires connected to the bottom of it for your light and, and all these thermocouples and stuff. And some of you, some of you might have a, a little relay looking deal on your control board and there's a little wire that comes out of it that goes over to your burner. And then some of you might have this burner control module where it, it comes out of that and it's got a ground and a little yellow wire. Um, regardless of what you have, they both work fine. It's just that the newer models, they've taken this igniter board and they've embedded it inside the um, board. You don't have a choice on what you get. You got to work with whatever they had at the time that they made it. But some of you, the the burner is going to, the electrode right here that I haven't drawn yet, it's going to be coming out of the board and some of it's going to come out of this extra board. Okay, so just whatever you have, go with it, but just know that it might land on either of these two. They both work fine. It's just that they this is sometimes on the board, sometimes it's not. And um, so now we'll talk about adjusting the gap on a refrigerator. Um, so, um, yeah, and a lot of times those little extra things are, are white, but sometimes they're behind a black cover. But just remember where all your wires went, and you'll be fine. I like to use paint pins, like little paint dots, to, to make it simple. So on your refrigerator, you're going to see, let's see here. This is your burner. Uh, it's got little slots in it. I'm not going to do all those slots. Um, so this is the burner on your refrigerator, and then you're going to have like a little um, nozzle here. It's got a small little hole right there. Um, and there's usually a finger's width between the burner, the, the nozzle and the burner. Um, a lot of times you can get a can of office air. This is one I did yesterday. I took one of those little cans of office air you might use to clean off your keyboard. And you just squirt in here and blow all, because the burner, the, the boiler is directly above this, okay? And um, actually, let's get rid of that. The boiler is directly above this, and you might even see a little pipe sticking out of the bottom. And if you notice, you'll even see your um, your um, electric heating element will disappear. The electric heating element actually comes down to about the bottom. If it's cold, you can stick your finger and feel the bottom of the electrode, and you can stick your finger in here. Now, what you should feel in here is this little swirly thing um it's called a swirler so these are some things you could do if your refrigerator is cold and you could take your fingers you could feel the electrode just to know that it's there but if you stick your finger inside of this burner directly the, the the chimney directly above the burner you should feel a swirler okay the purpose of that swirler is as this flame goes up it wants to move it to the outside walls of this of this burner tube and it also slows the flame down so a little bonus information on that don't do it while it's hot, you'll burn your finger. This thing's getting anywhere from 400 to 600 degrees. So let it cool first. But, so that's what's going on in your burner above. If you're curious about how refrigerators work, I did a video on how heat makes cold. Um, it's really fascinating. And I'm, I have a stunt refrigerator that we have acquired. And I'm going to be doing more videos on that refrigerator, including slicing and dicing. So be looking for that coming out in the next month or two. I don't know when I'm going to do it, but I've got that coming out. Anyway. So right here, you're going to have, it's usually a little plate that this is attached to. And guess what? Here's our piece of ceramic. Here's our electrode going to the two pieces that I told you it could be coming from. And right here is our, um, our burn, our electrode. And we want that to be about, uh, let's see, what was that number again? An eighth of an inch above the burner. I believe it's a third one in, but different manufacturers and different sizes of refrigerators have different distances over over which slot they want this thing. Um, I usually shoot for like, I think the third or the fourth slot. And you, by slot, there's these little slots in, um, in this burner. Um, and that's what I was talking about with the, uh, they're directly under here. And if there's any rust, it's gonna fall and, and foul the stuff out. So that was a point on getting that little can of office air and squirting the stuff out and blowing it out. Sometimes I'll, I'll bang on this. And then you'll see the, the rust fall <clears throat> and just let it just kind of clean it out really good. And then, then you blast that <clears throat> and it cleans it out. This, this little part of this burner is a little, they press the metal together and it slides into a little slot right here. Um, and so one screw right about there, the whole thing comes out if you needed to work on this. 
And um, but so you would adjust your gap. Your gap is going to be right over there. And guess what? This is ground. And then this guy's not ground. He's on ceramic. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to wiggle and make sure he's not a loose tooth feeling thing. You're going to make sure your gap is an eighth of an inch. And um, now some of the European refrigerators, I'm talking the Dometic um, eights, uh, sevens and eights, I believe, maybe a, a, it's got an eight in it. <clears throat> their electrode, it's the same exact concept in Europe as it is here, but their electrode is going to have a little bit more of a fancy flair to it, okay? Um, this guy is going to have a little bit of an angle to him. Uh, I think he comes up at an angle like that, and then he's got a little bit of a hook to him. But anyway, it's still an eighth of an inch. Or what's an eighth of an inch in metric? <clears throat> because I think it's metric. It's still an eighth of an inch. So anyway, guys, um, <clears throat> I hope that helps. I could add one more little piece of information. I was reading a comment the other day. Somebody was needing to work on their furnace and they their comment was, I don't have an access door on the outside of my furnace to get in to adjust any of these things. And so um, I don't remember who you were that asked the question, but that's when you have to pull your furnace out. Um, also yesterday, yesterday was a busy day. I had four customers yesterday, but, um, so I had to pull a furnace out twice. Um, so it's just going to be the couple screws, um, just turn off your gas, disconnect your gas. And when I take the gas off, I usually have a little plug that I cap that off with. I just don't want any debris or anything to get in the gas line. Um, cause these holes right here are very small and that's where it's going to be going to. And, um, on the whole thing, sometimes insects like to make nests in there. And I've take, if you're doing an annual, annual service, just unscrew this, clean that out. Just isopropyl alcohol um, and a cotton ball or, so, or um, uh, the floss-coated scepter. I'm thinking of uh, the Lego movie. Anyway, uh, a, a, a Q-tip or something with isopropyl alcohol is all you would use to clean that. Nothing, like if you're a TIG welder, don't take that little file and clean this out. You don't want to change the size of that hole, but clean that out. But um, the uh, furnace, so yeah, you're going to have to pull your furnace out in order to get to the front of it. Uh, unfortunately, the one I was working on, I thought that the cell switch was sticking um, because the furnace would start and then not open up its, I'm, I'm pointing to the drawing I had earlier, I should have said this then, but um, but just in the process of pulling the furnace out, it interfered enough with the cell switch so the cell switch was able to open itself and the furnace worked fine. But um, I still cleaned it and put a new um, cell switch on and then we found out that the furnace is running too hot, it's tripping, it's high limit, and then we found out that there's restriction in the ducts in the floor, and they had rugs all over it, so it was just a mess. But um, we got to figure it out. And, um, but anyway, so guys, if this helps, I, I, if you would rather have show and tell where I've got them in my hands, let me know. But I'm, I'm here with Trisha. We're recording a series on how to start, build, and maintain your own mobile RV service business. We're offering that over on our Patreon side. So if you're interested in that, you can jump over there, get more information on it. But that's why I'm not in my work clothes. And we were here with a grease board, and I had an opportunity to draw. And um, so I hope this helps you guys. So if it does, give us a thumb up. Enjoy the video. Share the video if you have people that uh, do have issues with their furnace or refrigerator or water heater. It could be something that gap is too large. And um, so oftentimes when you put a new electrode in, rarely are they exactly right. It's kind of like buying a tire. You got to figure out how much air to put in it. Buying a new electrode, you got to get it set right. Um, because these electrodes are made for all kinds of things. How does it know exactly what your furnace or what your piece is? Um, same thing with a regulator. If you're going to swap out your LP regulator, you need to have an ometer. You need to do a pressure test on those things. Right out of the box, I doubt it's going to be set right. Um, so anyway, I wanted to share that with you. I hope you enjoy, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.